Welcome to Canada's most irreverent talk show. This is the Andrew Lawton Show, brought to you by True North. Coming up, we navigate the woke, woke world we live in by combating institutional wokeness in the media, in corporate Canada, and in education. The Andrew Lawton Show starts right now. Hello and welcome to you all. This is another edition of Canada's most irreverent talk show, The Andrew Lawton Show, here on True North, Monday, September 26th, 2022. I was just last weekend or this past weekend in Red Deer, Alberta, a lovely place where I was uh, doing a a book signing, met a lot of you, thanks to all of you who came out and said hello, and also did a live edition of this very show on stage, the first time I've ever done it on stage before, and we'll have uh, bits of that in this program here, so stay tuned for that. But I wanted to sort of weave it together a little bit because uh, Jamil Giovanni, who is the president of the Canada Strong and Free Network, and there's a photo of us there, was very glad he invited me out to participate in this. He had said initially, like, Andrew, just take the time, take the 45 minutes or whatever it was and do whatever you want with it. And I was originally going to uh, just like take like 19 shots of whiskey and do a solo of Bohemian Rhapsody. And then uh, Justin Trudeau stole my bit. So I had to come up with something original. So instead, I decided to do a little bit of a themed look at this idea of institutional wokeness. And I would say, first off, John O'Sullivan, who's a a tremendous writer, I've met him on a number of occasions. He was a a former advisor to Margaret Thatcher when she was the uh, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. He has coined in his writing, O'Sullivan's First Law. And the law states that any institution that is not explicitly right-wing will over time become explicitly left-wing. And I think what he identifies in that is that there is this leftward drift in culture and institutions that unless you like completely plant your feet and say, no, this is who we are and what we believe in a way that supports liberty, you're going to get sucked in by those leftist forces in the culture. And I was thinking about that in the context of some of the main institutions we have in society today, education, the corporate world, and the educational world. And I did a couple of interviews with people that will share in this show, John Hilton O'Brien, who is the executive director of a parents' rights group, and also Tom Kamich, who is a conservative member of parliament that has a bit of a novel idea at combating institutional wokeness in corporate Canada. So I'll share those interviews, but I wanted to start off on the media side of things, because oftentimes, and I, you know, I'm guest hosting Fake News Friday while Candace Malcolm was away, so I know very well that media bias is a real issue. But it was interesting that a lot of people I don't know if understand the why, why it is. It's not just a bunch of people that sit around a table and say, you know, we're leftist ideologues and by George, we're going to make sure that our leftism is, uh, you know, insidiously entering all of our content and commentary and journalism. It, it's not like that. I mean, you do get some ideologues that work in mainstream media. There, there's no denying that. But a big problem, I, I think, is also where people are coming from before they end up in that industry. And you look at the journalism programs that exist in Canada, uh, by and large at liberal arts universities and big urban centers, they attract people that not always, but often come from these, I mean, what what in the U.S. they call the coastal elites. I mean, people that live in the coastal states as opposed to the so-called and derisively referred to flyover states. But people that come from Toronto, Ottawa, Vancouver, Montreal, and they aren't really connected necessarily to the communities that they need to understand to do their jobs effectively. And when people have that background, there are two things they can do with it. They can try to better themselves. They can try to learn about all these things and these people and these views they don't know, or they can keep the blinders on. And I've seen both. Like I was, when I was covering the Aaron O'Toole campaign, I met a journalist from a legacy media outlet who was very kind and very friendly and actually asked me at a couple of points, admittedly, like I almost like I was a zoo animal, like what would a conservative say about X or what would a conservative think about this? Because it was clear this person didn't actually know any conservatives and may not have ever sat down face to face with someone. And I use that with a small C, not a large C. So that I think is an example of of something where someone was trying to challenge their sort of internal selection bias. I've had other people that don't want to do that. For example, I was once trying to get a bunch of journalists out to a gun range. There was a a firearms group that had said they wanted to bring journalists out to let them go shooting so they could understand firearms. And a lot of them, even people that were not pro-gun, said, yeah, that seems like a good idea. 
And then I also had one that said, absolutely not. I don't like guns. I don't want to. I don't want to touch one. And this was a person who made factual errors in their reporting about firearms, who was just so completely closed-minded, didn't even want to entertain this world. So that is, I think, what you're up against. It's not just that people have these perspectives that have never put them in a church. They've never put them face-to-face -face with a conservative. They've never met someone who, in a U.S. context, voted for Trump or in Canada might have, you know, even vote conservative. So that's where I think it's very important. And I'm all about having conversations. I'm all about building, uh, breaking down barriers. You can't know what you've never been told or never been shown, but you have an obligation to, I think, want to, to, to try to expand your horizons. And I would encourage you to look up, she is a New York Post columnist, Selena Zito. She's a really fantastic author. She did this project that she wrote about, I think it was in 2018, called The Main Street Project, where she took a group of Harvard politics students, again, talk about coastal elites, and she took them on like a tour of Main Street, USA, including to a town called, I think it was Chicopee, Massachusetts, like an hour from Harvard that they had never been to, that everyone in the, it was like your quintessential small town. They had like, you know, the people that own the diner, the people that go to the gun range, and they were all Trump voters. And these students had like great conversations with these people and learned about small town America and then were shocked to learn later on that they had spent the day cavorting with Trump voters because they had like, again, in their, their, Harvard lives never encountered someone like that, despite the fact that two years earlier, Trump had won the election. And I think that's an example of how, and the rural-urban divide is tremendously important, but that's just one very significant example of how media bias takes hold in Canada. When you people are writing about communities and people that they don't understand, and some of them have never made an effort to understand them. And there are some mainstream media reporters that do a very good job of, of trying to do this. And, and it's, again, a lot of them may not genuinely have a bias, but even if they don't have an explicit political bias, they have an inherent bias in terms of lifestyle, as we all do. Our lives and our outlooks are shaped by our upbringing, by our environments, and, and so on. But it's about understanding the people that were outside that. So that's one example there. But we also took aim in this show at other institutions, at, uh, for example, corporate Canada, where we've all seen it. We've all seen the uh, profile pictures change of companies, the political proclamations, the capitulation to cancel culture, and it's corporations that are becoming political entities more than they are necessarily becoming corporate entities. So Tom Kamich, who is a conservative member of parliament in Calgary, a movement conservative, he is working on this bill called the Mind Your Own Business Act, which would essentially compare tell companies to not behave in a way that is about keeping their woke points uh, renewed and racking up their woke score, but about what is in the best interest of the shareholders. So basically compelling corporate leadership to make business decisions, not socio-political decisions. Now, there's a, a part of me, the libertarian in me, that's a bit uncomfortable with aspects of this, and we're going to talk about that, but it was my great privilege in Red Deer to sit down with conservative MP Tom Kamich on the Mind Your Own Business Act.
Thanks for listening to The Andrew Lawton Show. Support the program by donating to True North at www.tnc.news.